It's time for Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. When it comes to news on 95.1 FM, weather always comes first. A significant winter storm will impact parts of the northern and central plains as well as the upper Midwest with heavy snow, freezing rain, and strong winds through tonight. The combination of heavy snow and strong winds, this includes gusts up to 55 miles per hour, will produce blizzard conditions for central South Dakota into much of Nebraska. This is going to result in difficult to near impossible travel. If you have any friends or family that are going to be on those roadways, be sure to keep a tab on them. Closer to home, weather conditions will remain dry and seasonably cool this week. No hazardous weather is expected at this time. We'll have another look at the weather following this news. Yesterday was the Tularosa Christmas Community Dinner. I spoke with Bill Curry, who says they were able to feed a lot of people. So we fed 150 million. Uh, I want to say we had 90 deliveries. We were able to do that, and we had found a couple other folks that we just kind of stumbled upon, and uh, we were able to help them also. This event is a family tradition. We do it gladly. You know, uh, we're glad that we're able to carry on a tradition that my mom and dad had got involved in the community. So uh, now my wife and my son and my daughter and I, we are able to continue working with the community to do this. So we enjoy doing it very much. Special thanks going out to the donors and volunteers who made this event possible. The first responders Christmas Eve dinner was able to feed 140 first responders, and this includes Fort Bliss Ammo Dump. A member of the Otero County Sheriff's Department located three Army guys on Fort Bliss, but within Otero County, so they got fed as well. Many of the first responders who attended got seconds and even thirds. Leftovers were then taken to cope. The Alameda Park Zoo invites all to the education building at the zoo for a fun interactive reptile show happening Sunday from 2 until 3. If you want some information, call 575-439-4290. The Alamogordo Public Library Book Club invites all to remember New Mexico's 112th year as a U.S. state, and they're going to be discussing books set in or about the state of New Mexico. That's happening Saturday, January 6th from 1 to 3. Information is available by calling 575-439-4148. You can also join the Alamogordo Public Library Book Club group on Facebook. Well, today is Tuesday. It's time for an introspection with Pastor Johnny Walker. This is Johnny Walker with this week's introspection. As we leave behind the chaos of the holiday and dive headfirst into the new year, many of us are filled with a sense of hope and determination. As we set our New Year's resolution. We solemnly swear to eat healthier, exercise more, save money, and maybe even finally clean out that junk drawer in the kitchen. You know, the one with the ketchup packets and the salsa packets from Taco Bell and candy wrappers that have been there for the last three or four months. Ooh, we all have one. But let's be real. How many of us actually stick to these grandiose plans for more than a few weeks? I mean, I'm no expert, but I feel like the concept of New Year's resolutions is inherently flawed. First of all, who decided that the best time to make life-altering changes is in the dead of winter, when all we're all huddled under blankets and desperately craving carbs? It just seems like a recipe for failure from the get-go. And let's not forget the unrealistic expectations that come with setting resolutions. We all start the year with the best of intentions, but as soon as we slip up, even just a little, it's game over. One missed workout, and suddenly we've thrown in our towel in our fitness journey. A single indulgent dessert, and we're convinced we're a lost cause on the healthy eating front. It's like we put so much pressure on ourselves to be perfect that we set ourselves up for failure. But hey, I guess there's some science behind it all. Apparently, setting resolutions can help us form good habits if we manage to stick to them for a long enough time. But I'm sure the researchers that come up with this stuff probably stopped keeping up with this stuff a long time ago. I'm pretty sure anything sounds like a good idea if you say it in a fancy enough way. So as we venture into another year filled with promise of change, let's maybe cut ourselves a little slack. Sure, setting goals and striving to be better versions of ourselves is important. But let's not put all our eggs in the New Year's resolution mask. Maybe we can make smaller, more achievable goals throughout the year. Give ourselves the grace and flexibility to adapt as needed. After all, life is unpredictable and messy. And sometimes our best laid plans go awry. And that's okay. We'll get back up, dust ourselves off, and keep on trucking. Because in the end, it's not the resolutions set that define us. 
but the way we handle the curveballs life throws our way. And hey, if all else fails, there's always next year, right? This is Johnny Walker with this week's Introspection. I'll see you next week on Crazy Radio. News from around the state in just a moment. This is Alan McGordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. AlanMcGordoTownNews.com is a locally owned website featuring local news matters from a local perspective that affects you, and we bring it to you directly. Plus, local sports, cultural arts, and events. Online, AlanMcGordoTownNews.com. Owned and operated by Second Life Media. We are Otero County. Direct Free Plus is the right size book. It's the book if you need a phone book. That's what just one person has to say about Directory Plus. With its red cover, features, colorful yellow pages, and lots more, it's no wonder people all over use Directory Plus. It has so much more information. You can cross-check phone numbers or addresses or pretty much anything. Look on the plus side. Directory Plus. I'm a big fan of Directory Plus. While some are praising the actions of the New Mexico congressman, others are very critical of the Gabe Vasquez-sponsored Florida Mountains National Monument due to the negative impacts it will have on industry in Luna County. Steve Pierce spoke about the potential land grab on his podcast. Gabe Vasquez, the congressman from the 2nd District, is suggesting that we need a a monument that extends from the Floridas there outside of Dimming all the way up north across a couple of mountain ranges. We've got Cook's Peak and another range that is north of Dimming, but then it extends all the way down near Columbus. 245,000 acres that Gabe Vasquez wants to put out of private use. New Mexico Representative Jennifer Jones of District 32 spoke about the press conference about the proposed monument not being open to the public. The problem with that is the deceptiveness of going behind the backs of the stakeholders. There was no conversation before this happened with the community members. There were no public meetings. Even the local officials, state elected officials, were not invited, were not informed, were not part of the conversation. Lori Coleman, a local business owner and miner, also appeared sharing doubts about an economic report and comparing that information to what is claimed about another national monument. I know that there's supposedly an economic report out there that Senator Kerry Hamblin, U.S. Congress Rep. Gabe Vasquez, County Commissioner Ray Trejo, and Friends of the Floridas, Wes Light, all had done by a company out of Colorado, but they're not sharing that report publicly. But they're saying that the Oregon Mountains brought in 613 thousand people with a 234 million dollar economic impact well let me tell you what that comes out to that is 1600 people a day in the oregon mountains visitor center and when i went by there on wednesday they had had three people there that day somebody's math is not adding up folks this appears to be part of the biden plan for the federal government to obtain control of about 50 percent of public land so the gop is freaking out about it but are they doing it over the right reasons in 1923 Republican President Calvin Coolidge designated Carlsbad Cave as a national monument to a parade of cheers. Now, granted, that was 100 years ago, but look at what happened. The parking lot effectively killed off formation growth. Way to go. As a libertarian, I'm always suspect of anything the government plans on doing, since it typically becomes a disaster. My point? The GOP is correct in not wanting to allow this to happen. But... Are they fighting because it's the right thing to do, or is it because it's the Biden administration and Gabe Vasquez is spearheading it? Food for thought. Since 2015, more than 325,000 people have died due to opioid overdoses, with a majority of those being fentanyl-related. Illegal fentanyl is typically smuggled across the U.S.-Mexico border, putting New Mexico on the front lines. The state, which already faces issues with drug abuse, ranks 11th in terms of opioid deaths per capita. The Zia Recovery Center founder and CEO, Ryan Brewer, says he started his center back in 2017 to fill a need in the community. After his own experience of battling addiction, he says that fentanyl is unlike anything else. Brewer spoke with KRWG. I've dealt with addiction myself, and it is nothing compared to what these people are coming in and going through off of fentanyl addiction with the withdrawal and the detoxification and things like that. It's, it's like nothing we've seen before. The, the comfort meds barely scratch at anything. You've got to sit with these people and just hold them through their detox. Withdrawal symptoms from fentanyl can include physical symptoms like nausea, vomiting, sweating, and mental symptoms like anxiety and depression. So because of this, success can be rare. 
With such an unprecedented rise in fentanyl use, many people have been left playing catch-up to find new ways to help people and stop the nearly 200 daily deaths nationwide attributed to fentanyl. The Legislative Education Study Committee has approved its list of endorsed legislation proposals for the upcoming 30-day session, which begins here in a few days. The committee approved a bill that would create a career development success pilot program and corresponding fund for appropriations for that pilot. The program would be a three-year pilot administered by the Public Education Department to provide financial incentives to school districts whose students earn industry-recognized credentials by completing qualified industry credential programs or qualified workplace training programs. Sponsor Senate Minority Leader Craig Brandt says it will be a great benefit for students looking to go into trade instead of college. Brandt spoke with KSFR. It encourages the high schools to really focus on programs that can get kids a certificate so that they can go and work in a job right out of high school. I've talked to Don Chalmers Ford in, in Rio Rancho, and they're like, we'll hire as many kids as you can get certified at the first level. And he said, we'll pay for all the other levels if they're a good employee. And I've been hearing that from other employers. If you can get that first certificate for them, they come in and they show us they're a good employee. We'll pay for all the training they need. The committee also approved bills that would specify hourly training requirements for all school board and charter governing council members, as well as salary requirements. Another bill would establish requirements for standards-based administrative preparation programs. The bill would require the Public Education Department to establish, by rule, criteria for such that includes specific evidence-based standards. And this includes a full academic year and paid residency. In April of 2022, we covered a story about the Webster family from Wisconsin visiting Albuquerque for the Gathering of Nations. As you'll recall, someone broke into their car while it was parked at a hotel. Three sets of regalia were stolen, but just days before Christmas, Josephine Webster got quite the surprise. And she shared that experience with KOAT. Last week I got a call, or I got a text message from a lady and she said, um, hey, I just, I wanted to message you and let you know that I think I have your beadwork. And I've gotten calls like that for the last year and a half and I'm like, okay, can you send me a picture of it? And she says, yeah, I'll send it in a minute, but they never came through. So I was like, well, I don't know if it's mine if you don't send me a picture. And all these pictures came through and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's the beadwork. The woman wants to remain anonymous, but she found and bought back every piece and put it into a box. Regalia from all three stolen sets were in near perfect condition. I told her, I said, I will give you everything back that you paid for this. And she was like, absolutely not. Nope. Like this belongs to you and I want it back, you know, with your kids. The Webster family did not attend the 2023 Gathering of Nations due to their missing regalia, but will be at the 2024 event. And they're taking the woman who found their items along as their guest. The Gathering of Nations powwow is scheduled for April 25th through the 27th at Expo New Mexico. Sports and weather are next. This is Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. They are role models and educators. Their work requires a great deal of time and energy for very little pay. Who are these unsung heroes? Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. The simple truth about education-based athletics in New Mexico is this. Without a committed team of coaches and administrators, they just wouldn't be possible. School sports, they bring out the best in all of us. This message presented by the New Mexico Activities Association and the New Mexico Athletic Directors Association. There are 17 games for New Mexico girls basketball tomorrow, including Albuquerque Academy at Dexter, Artesia at Roswell, Lovington comes to Alamogordo, <laughs> go Lady Tigers. And there are 19 games for New Mexico varsity basketball tomorrow, including Piedra Vista at Roswell, and Irvin heads to Chaparral. Your crazy radio spot on weather forecast for the Tularosa Basin today calls for sunny skies. Winds gusting as high as 21 miles per hour. Mostly clear tonight, sunny tomorrow. Your high today in the basin, 47. Low tonight of 26. Wind chills are going to make it feel like it's 21. High tomorrow, 50 degrees. In Cloudcroft, sunny skies today. Winds gusting as high as 40 miles per hour. Mostly clear tonight with winds gusting as high as 34. Sunny tomorrow. Your high today in Cloudcroft, 27. Wind chills are going to make it feel like it's negative 5. Low tonight of 16. Wind chills are going to make it feel like it's 0. High tomorrow, 37. Wind chills are going to make it feel like it's 16 degrees. Don't forget about your pets, pipes, and plants. Local breaking news can be found on our website, alamogordotownnews.com, and learn more about Crazy Radio by visiting klhradio.org. Also, check out the Crazy KLH Radio YouTube channel. That's where we post our daily newscasts, complete interviews, and other information which concerns everyone in the Tularosa Basin. Be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to our channel if you've not done so already. 
That way you too can remain informed of the goings-on in the Tularosa Basin. Well, that concludes today's edition of Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero.